All right, we're continuing this theme of uh, inviting guests to come and hang out and do wash and talks. I thought the one we did with Anthony was pretty cool. Uh, and so I invited Caleb to come up. Uh, C is it CC Detailing? CC Detailing. CC Detailing. Mm -hmm. He's uh, one of our affiliates and uh, has a YouTube channel uh, where you're sharing you know, customer cars you're working on all the time. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and so I figured we'd, um, we'd, we'd hang out and wash the car and kind of do it together and, um, and just chat about life and business and all that kind of stuff. Since you have a detailing business, it'd be kind of mm -hmm. interesting to talk about some of that stuff and see if I can get me in trouble with all the other practitioners <laughs> when I talk, talk in big business to small business yeah. and, uh, and, uh, and that usually, usually, usually gets me in trouble with people. But um, sorry for you guys, the last watch and talk was the Evo. The only dirty car, well, I, the only dirty car I had was the Evo, my M3 and my, uh, my GT3 were both clean. The Rivian's no fun to wash. I'll wash that by myself this weekend. Uh, and so we're gonna wash the Evo and uh, show you guys, uh, I need to do some undercarriage cleaning. So we'll do the, uh, the Mosmatic under undercarriage cleaner nice. as well. So we'll do that. Car's wet, it's pouring torrential <laughs> downpour, you know, uh, outside. So, uh, so today's project is to, uh, I wanna put um, glass coating on too. Yeah. Uh, and so this is a new, I don't know if, I guess this is what he's already selling. So this is Armor Detail, Bradley's yeah. uh, glass coating. I've used that before, they uh, had a company send it. He's sending, he's making a new one. Uh -huh. And um, and so he suggested two coats of this. Nice. Um, Built Hamber is, I believe, in transit. Good. So pre-order will be coming, I don't know, next couple of weeks, a week, nice. a week or so. I've been excited for that stuff. Like, it's good, yeah. it's, it's great. It's, now I get to see it in action. Yeah. So let's get set up. I finally, I've been talking about the hose. So I didn't install the hose, but I finally brought the hose. So I'm gonna swamp the hose here at some point. Not today, but at some point. So have you, um, you have a Krenzla? No, I have an Active 2.0. Okay, cool. So yeah. this will be your first experience with a dual Krenzla. But say, be interested first to get, time with a Krenzla in general, and you've yeah. given me the dual setup. I'd be interested <laughs> to get your uh, take on this. So if you'll hold that for me, yeah. pull this out. So this is the original, original, like prototype number one Cobra Jet hose, and it still works, it's still great. So I've, this has been to, what, four different houses, I think, or Man. something, at three different houses. Can't get over the aesthetics of it. Every time I see a well put together pressure washer setup, Yeah, it's that, awesome. That gets it? me excited. Yeah, it's awesome. And then soon I'll have a functional, uh, so I can't use the CR with the dual, uh, you know, it doesn't, oh, yeah. it doesn't allow enough flow. Uh, and so it would be nice to, uh, to be able to use our, our system here. So I'm gonna start testing that out. We put one in Fred's garage and we're gonna really start digging into it here in the next, next month or so. Kind of have a lot on the go at the moment. <laughs> so uh, we're on, good to go there. Let's get our bucket set up here. I always like to, uh, I mean, you know the story, I like to do the rinse bucket first. Yep. Get that going. While we're doing that, let's make our soap. I think uh, I think we'll just use GSF. So we'll just do GSF today, but we need to pop off some fluids here. So I do have a metering bucket filler that I need to test out. It's I somewhere at this. HQ. This is really cool. Yeah, you like that? Wow. Yeah. 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 It, it's awesome, I just, you know, because then I, then I just put them there to dry and I don't have to leave them sitting in the bucket and stuff. It's so simple too, I've never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's um, Perfect Detail USA. It's a collaboration with him. Man. So I need some, I've got all my stuff all dialed, all set up now. I got everything where it belongs, gallon spouts. I spent, uh, I don't know, a couple dozen hours going back through all my stuff. You know, I made some videos with uh, with some, you know, Pan and Rad Garage, Corey from Car Pro. Yeah, I just to, watched uh, the Car Pro one. I like how you're making a whole master list of everything that you can put together. Because a lot yeah. of times you'll see people who are doing stuff when it comes to detailing or whatever, and they don't, all you can see is what they're using. But yeah. like, you put together a whole master list that someone can go through and then be like, oh, okay, cool. Just boom, that's what he's using. I'm gonna use that. Yeah, I think that that's, I mean, which way is on, which way is off? Oh, that's on. So this is the Griot's gallon spout. Am I stupid or something? That's off. So that should be on. It looked like it did something. <laughs> did 
Did I leave the... Uh, Might have left the thing on. Did I leave the cellophane on? Oh, <laughs> rookie move there, Matty. <laughs> like, what am I doing here? Am I stupid? You would think it would be turned up to open. Take notes, everybody. <laughs> why did I... I don't know why I would have done that. I must have been in a rush or something. So, this is my favorite thing to do, is freaking top stuff off. It's like the... I don't know. It's kind of therapeutic. Yeah, it is. There we go. I do like this this idea of having like a little spout. That's way better than the glug 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 glug, and then just spills yeah. everywhere, splatters, makes a mess. Yeah. Although it's not siphoning very well. So you just go straight up, undiluted, brake yeah. buster. Yep. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> This is my first time using this thing. Yeah, rookie. Yeah. <laughs> All right, maybe we need to take these out of the store. I put them in there before I actually used one. Just thought it was freaking cool. I'm like, there's no way that isn't the coolest thing ever. I just gotta learn. It's really the, cool. Just gotta learn the details, you know. It's like you need a little funnel for the funnel. <laughs> yeah. All right. But look at that. That's 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 the dream right there, buddy. Just oh yeah. Set up. I got some tester towels here. Microfiber uh, madness again. I bought them again. I think I'm more impressed out. by your towels. There's one thing that I just like. The, out of all the detailing products I can buy, whenever I buy a whole new set of towels, that's something that makes me really happy. Makes you happy, yeah. And whenever I see a cabinet full of nicely stacked, clean towels, yeah, that that really makes me happy. That's the way to go, right? All right. So now we need uh, some GSF. Let's get this going. Well, let's use up, uh, I've got some GFX. Let's use this up. I'm gonna use this up here. So the other thing I've been doing lately is getting you know, more accurate here. So we'll go 150 milliliters. Um, mainly because the griots, you know, they're, the indicators aren't quite as easy to read as the, uh, as their MTMs were. Yeah. You can just set that on the floor. Huh. I didn't want to throw your nice gun on like that. Well, on the, uh, <laughs> that's the cool thing about the Swiss tracks is I can just put it on the floor. You don't have to worry about it. I should probably get a measuring cup too. My favorite measurement when it comes to this stuff is like, oh, that feels right. So like maybe getting something yeah. to accurately put in there. Yeah. Would be a lot better. So that's, is that the, that's Christmas the Christmas one? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah. It's a little out of character for me to do anything fun. <laughs> so I like to keep people on their toes, you know? That's really good. <laughs> fun and me, you know, depends, I guess it depends off. on your definition of fun, right? So that's good to go. Let's dump the rest of this in here. I don't know, man, it makes me happy. Whenever I finish something, finish a bottle of something, I don't know, I should feel accomplished. Do you have a hard time throwing it away or do you want to like stack and make like a little no, collection? God, no, I no. love throwing stuff away. <laughs> I get that way with everything except for like when I get through like a whole bottle of a coating, especially if it's a nice coating, like something like a kamikaze coating. Mm. I'm like, I kind of want to put that on a shelf. So that way someone opens up mm. one of my things one day and they see like a whole shelf of just empty bottles of like kamikazes and pancone or whatever. That sounds like a, sounds like a hoarder move there. <laughs> yeah, buddy. a little bit. <laughs> sounds like a hoarder move. All right, so last thing to do, let's top off our touch list. So I'm going to spend a lot of time on uh, metering and testing uh, touch lists and figure out, you know, what's the best solution. The, the difficult part is if I test out the current touch lists, uh, then the new, t this is the, 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 the original. Uh, the, the stuff we have coming is the new version that it's roughly eight times more concentrated. Oh, wow. And so the problem with the dual Krenza is that in order to get a 4% panel impact ratio, I need... 1100 milliliters in a 1000 milliliter bottle. So that, that, that doesn't <laughs> Matt work. Matt doesn't right? check out there. Right, right. <laughs> so, so I just use it straight up and yeah. go fast. So the new stuff I ought to be able to dilute, you know, say 50 50 or something like that, and we should, we should be good to go. So right now I'm rifling through. I'll use like a probably a little like a third of this foam cannon to foam the car down at full concentrate, so which is not, 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 not cheap. No, that's but the new stuff, good. the new version, the new diluted version is going to, can you throw that on the top there? Yep. The new version is going to end up being um, super cheap, super efficient. It's going to be freaking sweet. 
Okay, so now we're all set up. Um, let's uh, let's get the wheels going here. Let's do that. And you put no water in your wheel bucket, right? Hmm? No water in the wheel bucket. I don't, yeah. I don't want to get it all freaking dirty. Yeah, that's true. It would get dirty. Somebody's messing with my wheel bucket here. This is the one from HQ, which, you know, people were using. Can't let anybody use anything. Mess it up. Yeah, I just got the complete bucket package. Nice. And now I see why. Like, it's good. It's really good. Yeah. It just, you know, all these little tweaks are just little, little functional things that yeah. make your life a little bit better. Well, know? and just the idea of like, you having a dolly to pull around your buckets with. Otherwise, yeah. you know, for the last three, four years, it's just been me picking up a wheel bucket, go to the yeah. next car, next car, Which next car. Which isn't the end of the world. No, it's not. But I mean, having that, especially like, right. as, like as a luxury, it's, yeah. it makes it a whole lot better. So a little tip for you guys, if you're, um, so you don't jack up your buckets, because these buckets aren't super cheap. Um, I just put it right at the edge, where, just where, right, right where it's touching. So the little bucket stays to keep it centered up. If you pinch down, especially with the detail guard in there, you're eventually going to split the bucket. And then people like, you know, then they try to warranty claim me. I'm like, freaking, you ruined it. I didn't have anything to do with that. I told you not to do that. Let me claim a warranty on a bucket. <laughs> yeah, well, I do. And I said, you know, tough luck, buddy. You messed it up. All right, let me get my stool here. Take this off. Go. I do need to swap out my... That's the other thing I need to do. See, when I put this in here, in the regular original version, now it's kind of hard to reach down in there and oh, get it yeah. out. So we've shortened it up to make it more efficient. Yeah, I would definitely want so, that shorter. So I'll do the wheels, then we'll do the undercarriage, and then uh, because I've been driving on the dirt road to get the HQ, yeah. I uh, have to do the undercarriage, so my car's a lot dirtier than it normally would be. I'm excited to see the undercarriage sprayer too. It's cool. Is it? Yeah. yeah. It it's looks like, like it's cool. It's like I need some air in my tires. So what's your story? How did you get into detailing? How'd this start? <laughs> detailing started with, uh, well, I got a Mark 7 Golf R 2015, mm -hmm. and I wanted to take really cool pictures and put it on Instagram. And take okay. videos and stuff. Holy crap. So with the double Krenzel, notice I'm like three feet away. Yeah, oh my god. You gotta, you gotta back up a little bit. <laughs> Holy it's, crap. It's got a little spiciness there. And no one's thought of that before? What? <laughs> the double Krenzel? I'm sure somebody has, but... <laughs> oh, man. Well, I wanted to take clean, cool photos of my car, and I was like, ah, well, got to keep the car clean if I want to do that. And then that led me down the rabbit hole of looking at products and then finding YouTubers. And then that's when I stumbled upon your channel, actually, mm. was trying to get through, like, oh, what's a good process? And then, of course, just about like everything else I'm really, really, really excited about, you, you know, for the lack of a better term, you get obsessed. Sure. Yeah. And that's what set me down this whole rabbit hole. And then I had a family friend saw me like washing the car. And they were like, hey, do you wash cars? Like, I'll pay you. And yeah. I was like, okay, cool. When was this? Uh, four years ago now. Okay. And so I washed their car and then they came to me like, how much for it? And I was like, oh, uh, I don't bucks. know. Well, no, I did the bucks. inside. She had three kids, all oh, right? Okay. And the inside was destroyed. It was a Ford Expedition. And I went to Google real quick. I was like, what do I charge? And it said 250. I said okay. 250. And they were like, yeah, no problem. I was like, I can make 250 bucks. That's cool. Just like that. Mm -hmm. And I was 20, 22 at the time, yeah. now 26. So and, like, and what were you, did you have a job? What were you doing instead? Yeah, at the time, I was actually an administrator at a uh, elementary school. Okay. And so not making a whole lot of money. Not a whole lot of money. No, yeah. and I was still in college. And I was probably in, I think, my sophomore year of college for business. Mm -hmm. And I knew this whole time I wanted to do something in regards to my own business because I grew up with like my father, he owns his own business and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I figured the school was cool for now, but I knew it wasn't going to last. Like there was no way it was going to last. So it was yeah. like, okay, cool. And then finally, uh, I actually had that family friend rec refer to me somebody for a detail and they wanted me to polish it. Okay. I've never used a polisher before, but I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. <laughs> and he's like, how much? And I was like, uh... 650 bucks and he's like okay cool and i'm like man this job what i can make six okay uh -huh. yeah. so, <laughs> so you're doing this on nights and weekends and stuff yeah well, pretty much yeah. yeah okay so i did little stuff for about maybe six months until that job came and i was mm -hmm. like you know what i feel like i'm wasting my time here yeah 
And so I respectfully gave a two-week notice and everything and did this guy's car. Mm -hmm. And uh, put a polisher on paint for the first time, and that was terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> but I came back the next day, and it looked beautiful. So I was like, oh, my gosh, this worked out great. Yeah. And uh, What did you use? What, what polisher? What polish? Do you remember? Oh, you're going to love this. It was a... $80 Max Shine 5 oh, inch geez. polisher. Oh, you're going to love that, huh? <laughs> okay. You can think Pan for that. I saw his video. <laughs> I was like, oh, I should get this. That's junk. I'll, I'll make sure to. <laughs> There's a microfiber pad from McGuire, though, with their microfiber He's... polish and compound. Mm -hmm. It came out nice, though. And uh, ended up doing a, I think it was Kona 845 with Jess Car on top. Okay. Just for the protectant, just from watching your videos. And the lady was going crazy. <laughs> Loved it. I mean, it, yeah. honestly, when they came and got it, they were like, this looks amazing. <laughs> and then come to find out, it's actually one of the biggest lawyers in Lakeland. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. A vehicle, and I was like, oh man, if I would have messed that up. <laughs> but it worked out. And then from there, it just kind of snowballed mm. until I finally got my first shot. That's when it was like, ooh, yeah. this is game changing. And that's when I went all in. Grab me the uh, rust inhibitor there. So I think this is eight to one. Just because of how rainy and humid it is, I'm gonna hit it. Normally I wouldn't hit it till after I'm done washing, but gotcha. try to prevent a little bit of the rusting. I can already see it rusting over. I'll do this But one. as for YouTube, that was all, that was all just me recording the jobs as I went for fun because I wanted to learn how to make cool car videos yeah and then I was like well I can probably learn by using other people's cars mm. instead of just always using my own probably get bored of that yeah that's yeah. how it all turned out doing the same car over and over is not you know yeah no it's, you, it's run no out fun of, you run out of stuff <laughs> so you can see I mean we're moving some water but yeah, it's that you know thousand crazy. psi. Yeah, and there's no kick. Really? So I showed in the video yesterday, like it's when I when I use the the um, the the KWS, the big boy, the twenty millimeter pump, because you could do roughly four gallon, you know, three and change gallons a minute yeah. on a single machine easily. You could do five, ten gallons a minute on a single machine, especially if you have the power for it. But uh, but the problem is those will hold more inline pressure. And so right now we're only holding a thousand psi or or so. So when I pull, it's much more manageable versus you know, I, you know with the, with the, with the KWS I kind of have to kind of have to either you know they really pay attention or you know double hand it. Not I as, just got into this whole world of nitro pressure washers only a year ago. I had this like a little crappy Sunjo for like yeah. three years detailing, and then yeah. I got an active 2.0. I was like, oh, this is what the hype is about. Yeah, it's different. And then yeah. now I've like gone down the rabbit hole, and it's like Krenzel right. looks like it's. It goes ago. back to the whole thing, like having a nice stool, having mm. uh, you know better buckets. It's not about expensive. It's no. about, and you don't get it all at once, right? Yeah, so you're exactly. progressing. You kind of work your way up. You don't go right to a Krenzel. Most people, you know, that's why the active 2.0 is so awesome because. Yeah. Shoot, we didn't we didn't have that several years ago. No, there was no all. interim step. There was either you stick with cheap or mm -hmm. really expensive. That's like that Sunjo, man. It was it was yeah. dirt cheap, but hey, it lasted three years. It worked, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then it was like once I got the active, I was like, man, this is what yeah. it's, it's all about. Right. Well, and then you go to this. Yeah, it's um. You know, the, the progression and then the, the pursuit to, you know, an excellent washing process, an excellent washing product, it doesn't have to happen overnight. And actually, I think you'll appreciate it more if you, yeah. if you take the steps. One thing I learned like right at the beginning was uh, when I was looking at all these products, I think everyone who first starts a hobby, you know, they start at the very basics where they're like, oh man, like I wish I had those things. Mm -hmm. And then what I quickly found out was, do I enjoy the process? Mm -hmm. And if I enjoy it, then we're already on the right track. Yeah. And yeah. so, I mean, I know like it's my business now. It's really grown to something great, but my, I guess you don't say my biggest fault is that I actually enjoy it. Because mm, for, <laughs> for a business, if you really love it, you know, they can really, you know, kind of screw you. So, how, like, so what are you, 27? 26. 26? Yeah. You're in, and you're in Lakeland, which is like an hour from here, roughly yeah. an hour and 10. 
So you did that first lady's car, right? Mm. Polished it. And then what happened from there? There was just a bunch of little things here and there. Mostly, you know, just washing it. Interiors quickly learned that uh, I hate doing interiors. But you're still working, right? Yes, you have a job. Was, yeah, so still working. And yeah. then uh, up until that, that vehicle that I was talking about, that's when I ended up getting my two-week notice and just saying, you know what, I'm going to dive right into this. Mm -hmm. And started really hardcore on YouTube. Not even for like the sake of like maybe getting somewhere with YouTube. It was more or less like, let me reach out to this person or if someone contacts me, oh, hey, here's a video. You can see the process. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And yeah. With the end goal of like getting more paint corrections and more ceramic coatings. So Not you're using it as top of funnel, right? So you're yeah. sure. Or actually, in your case, more of a, a demonstration or a sales tool. Right? Yeah, that was use. the whole purpose. Plus fun, yeah. you know? Yeah. It wasn't really for the sake of making it or getting big on YouTube. It was like, oh, this is fun yeah. and it can really help me. And I wanted to get more into the pink, like, co like pink correction, ceramic coatings. Yeah. And not only because like money or whatever for it, but because I enjoyed that way more. And so it was like, maybe I can start getting more cars, record them, people will click on mm. it, or I can send it to them. And that worked out phenomenally. Because I would say like, I will say maybe 90% of the cars I do now are the pink corrections. And it's because I can show them the whole process. They're like, oh yeah, I'm so down to do it. I'm like, okay. So cool. the channel's called CC Detailing? Yes, sir. CC so, Detailing. So stop watching right now. <laughs> do me a favor. Go help my young friend out here. Go subscribe. It means a lot to us to have that kind of momentum when you have people go and subscribe. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, I mean, you probably <laughs> should do that too. Um, I suspect if anybody's made it this far in a washing talk, they already are. So it's kind of a dumb thing for me to even say. But uh, go, go help Caleb out. And let's, get him, let's get him some new followers here. So anyway, I'm doing, uh, you know, notice I like to hit the uh, tires with a little extra brake buster. Somebody was complaining about or saying that brake buster isn't, uh, not complaining, but suggesting it wasn't, wasn't uh, strong enough for, for tires. I mean, I guess it depends on the level of tire, you know, how, how jacked up your tire strong. is. But I, I, you know, if I'm doing a initial tire cleaning, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use yeah. Wise Guy or something else. But for regular maintenance, it's great. So notice the difference in the Krenzla, the, just the operating frequency. Now, most of the sound you're hearing is about we're moving a lot of water. But, it, you know, they operate at like 70 decibels. But it's a different 70 dB than the Active 2.0. Very know, different. I feel like the Active 2.0 is has like that whine, you know, that ringing almost that over time just ugh, yeah, it's annoying. destroys your ears. Yeah, and so people underestimate the tone or the tonality, you know, what what the tone of the pressure washer is, you know, sound, is making. Well, like and all they, electric pressure washers, I feel like have that weird kind of. Can you pull me back here? And yeah. I feel like electric pressure washers all have that same kind of whiny. Yeah. High ringing noise. Yeah. I don't think I need to do this, but that's another thing we can do here today is uh, Dr. Beasley's the uh, exhaust canister. Yeah. Put some, uh, put the coating on it. I don't think I ever did this one. It's funny because I walked in here, I was like, man, I can't wait to learn Matt's wash process. And I'm like, wait, I learned from him, dude. <laughs> so I'm like, anything new? No. <laughs> Do these wheels? Yeah, sure. I want to use the pressure washer. Yeah. So just, you know, when the only tip is when you just get a little further back, you're going to get blasted in the face by a uh, brake buster. Oh, man. So you just move your chair back when you foam it. Let's start down here. Whoa. It's good, right? That's a whole different experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so, you know, your Active 2.0 is doing, you know, is doing two gallons a minute. And then this is doing, you know, considerably more. Now, do you have the, the Mosmatic fittings or the MTM fittings? I have the MTM fittings. Yeah, yeah so that's another, you know, significant upgrade. Oh, oh, it's still over there. I'm going to stand back for this. Chill out, buddy. Just chill. Oh, man. 
So then you, we'll see how good you are at this at uh, talking while working. Let's see if we can pull this off. So you, um, you polish the lady's car. You're, you, you, when, when do you leave um, your job? When does that happen? Uh, that was right after that first polishing job. Okay. That first polishing job really had me like, oh, I can spend a couple days, make 650 and enjoy the process of it. So at the school, I mean, I was probably bringing home like, you know, 400 a week. Yeah. So it was like, there's no way <laughs> I can do this and love it. Yeah. And whenever uh, they left and they were happy, you yeah. know, that's, that was even more for me because I was like, oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. So I gave my two week notice and in the process, I tried to really start with everything. I made a logo, yeah. you know, really got into my own schedule because the biggest thing I will say is uh, <laughs> you have to make your own structure whenever you're starting on your own. Mm. How did that, how did you do with that, deal with that? Did you do all right with that? Or Real quick, you do you use this? Around? Do you use this for your Yeah, yeah, okay, just, cool. Um, did you find, was that a difficult transition? Eh, to, like, at first, yeah, I would say at first it definitely was. Do you sleep until noon? <laughs> That was or were you waking up freaking out that you don't have a job anymore? <laughs> well, that actually happened for a little bit, yeah. yeah. I would wake up and go, oh no, I gotta go to work. I'm like, wait, I don't have a job. <laughs> yeah. But at least for me, it was more or less like, uh, where, where's your, there you go, I like to spray the mitt. For me, it was more or less like, I knew if I were to take advantage of the fact that I didn't have a job and slept in, stayed up late, mm -hmm. that it would really end up just screwing me in the end. Yeah. So I purposely would try to find something to do. So whether that be research something online mm -hmm. or whatever it is, I would wake up every morning at 4.30 yeah. and still figure out something to do on my computer. That's what really made me get like a deep dive into editing videos okay. is because I needed something to do and not just feel like you know a worthless bum at home. <laughs> doing nothing. And then as cars would come in, I would always get a bunch of video for it and then learn how to make like cinematic videos. Well, how are you getting the people? How are you <laughs> doing the sales part? Honestly, I'm not really even too sure how I did that. <laughs> people just came. The biggest thing uh, about like Lakeland, Florida is that it's very, very, very word to mouth. Okay. So you can try to do like ads online and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work too well though. It's always word to mouth. So mm -hmm. it really is the product of know the right people. Okay. And so I ended up figuring out who the right people were and I was already in kind of like the car community. Yeah. From there on, like I just messaged my friends in the car community like, Hey, I'm starting to do this. Will you let me do your car for free? And they're like, yeah, sure. And there was like a strategy starting to be formed for me at least. Like, uh, I did some normal cars of friends. Yeah. And a couple of buddies who had really nice cars, I would go and do their cars and record it while I would hold on to it because I wanted to wait for and see if YouTube did anything. Because if YouTube started getting any views, mm -hmm. I wanted to post a nicer car. Let it kind of get caught by the algorithm sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then I can use that video, post it online, share it to people. And that's what happened. I had a, I think like a Mazda, some basic Mazda hit a thousand views. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I then posted up my friend's R35 GTR video. Yeah. And then that took off. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. And that led to other people with nicer cars going, oh, this guy's local. Okay, cool. Let's do that. Yeah, you're going to take a bath with this. So that's one of the... One of the interesting things about, well, I guess, one of the mistakes I think that, that would be of interest to you know young you know entrepreneurs is that if you you can you, you can you can convince yourself that you're working yeah. while you're just planning to work yeah right so you're learning how to edit you're learning how to make videos you're not actually making videos mm -hmm. you're. You're thinking about selling. You yeah. know, you're planning to, to sell. You're planning to do business. And I think that's one of the biggest mistakes in any kind of business that people make is that they attempt to, or, or they feel like they're working, but really working is when you're working in a car. Yeah. Honestly, like whenever I started getting nicer cars, it was because of, uh, you know, just knowing people. 
yeah. from the car community. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think I did my, uh, my own car. Like it hit me. I was like, oh, I can just do my own car. <laughs> yeah. And that did really good views wise. And I would use that to then show to more customers because really it ended up becoming where uh, I finally hit like a thousand subscribers on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And people who knew me in the car community would tell their people in the car community who I didn't know. And then they would come to me. And me personally, like, I mean, in between all of that, there really isn't anything crazy other than just people knew someone and came to me. Yeah. But like, really, if it wasn't for being in the car community, I don't think I would have gone anywhere, really. Mm -hmm. Just because I do really like cars. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. And my brain was like, well, I've already, I'm already in this community. I love cars. So if this is where the business is, I need to expand more into the car community. So mm -hmm. learning how to edit for YouTube and stuff as well led me to making cool car videos in general, going to car meets, events, stuff like that. Oh, I didn't put it on, look at that. Yeah. Really, at the end of the day, it was just me wanting to make cool car videos. <laughs> and that's what kind of built the entire business at this point. So where were you detailing? In your garage or your parents' garage or through somebody's garage or customers? <laughs> uh, it was a little bit of everywhere, yeah. yeah. It was mostly me at home in my driveway. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my grandmother said, hey, you can come use my garage if you want. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. And then I uh, used her garage for a bit. And I think uh, the big pivotal moment was I was probably a year into that. Mm -hmm. with somewhat steady customers and I'll never forget I had a white Camaro in my driveway like a newer one mm -hmm. I had just got done polishing it and uh, I had coated it with like some simple spray coating thing mm -hmm. and then it rained mm. and I remember looking out from my front porch and I was like man did all this work if I don't find a shop I'm, I give up with this man yeah so just a little prayer walked inside <laughs> Three hours later, I got a call that my buddy had a shop for us. That's really what it was. I mean, he ended up calling me because he had just gotten a job somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like, he's a mechanic. He's like, hey man, this guy said, you guys can rent the basement if you want. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'll take it sight unseen. Sight unseen, I don't care. I'll do it because I can't do this anymore. And that's pretty much where I'm at today with the shop. Like I went in there, saw it was like a 3,700 square foot basement with a garage bay and everything. Yeah. And if it wasn't for me getting a shop, <laughs> it would make life, I mean, shout out to all the mobile detailers out there. I don't know how you guys do it, man. Yeah. That is, that is really, really something else. Plus, same thing with like recording. It's always weird, like whenever I was recording, I could get some uh, nicer cars, but then I'm going to this guy's house and I have my iPhone set up on like a tripod. And yeah, yeah. I, I didn't like the way that looked either. <laughs> I felt like some loser kid just <laughs> recording a car in some dude's driveway. <laughs> but it was worth it. A lot of them were very supportive. Yeah, I'm sure. that see, you know, anybody who's successful can see somebody. Who, I'm sure some of your customers are asking you, well, how, well what are you doing with that? How do I, how do I you know, promote my business in, on YouTube? You know? Yeah, I've had or, that a couple Why times are you too. making videos? You know, what's that about? Yeah, honestly. I didn't get it a whole lot with the phone, just a little bit, but then yeah. when I bought my first camera, yeah, everyone yeah. asked. Yeah, yeah. They are like, how do, how do you use that? What are you doing? Oh, what are you doing? Hey, I'm going to stand back. I'm going to take a bath if I don't stand back. Yeah. Oh, sweet. This is the same architecture here, same same uh, quick disconnect and everything, just with a, with a longer wand. Wow. And then this can do the floor or the car. So you can flip it. Correct. Wow. It looks very high quality. <laughs> yeah, it's all T316 stainless. That's why it's like freaking 700 bucks, you know, because we wanted it to be, we wanted it to last forever. And so these little pins here will allow it to, you can flip it over and put it on the, uh, put it on the floor and, you know, clean the Swiss tracks or yeah. concrete or whatever. Now I only 
like to go out halfway, just so I don't want to shoot it out the other side of the car, you know. So I'll do both sides. That's way cooler than some little Ryobi one. up north man this would be the first oh that would be buy. you'd have to have that up north there's no way <laughs> I need some P21 ass here. yeah i've been using it on this just here recently since i've been riding down the darn sand road yeah well i'm thinking like every year when we go up to the mountains like may like we go up to north carolina and then helen for alpine volks fair yeah and it's like that would be something probably to bring with the wash kit yep <laughs> Only the best here. I don't know, stuff like this makes me happy. Yeah, I'm excited, it's not even mine. <laughs> Just seeing it in action. So, you know, again, I've used all of them as well. I've used the, you know, the MTM, the Ryobi, and a bunch of others. This is just a different level. Yeah. And then, again, the wheels flip over, and so you can clean the surface. Yeah, see, that's great. I might as well show them now while we're out of here. I wanted to ask, but I didn't want to be like, hey, just take the time. <laughs> Super simple. Oh, just pivots over. I thought maybe you'd have to unbolt it real quick and put it back on. No. Yeah. Pull a little cotter pin. And I can go on the floor. Or anything. If you think about my shop floor, like that'd be a way yep. easy way to clean it. Yeah, especially with all the polish dust you have going on all over. Oh yeah. And then what we do is we adjust the nozzle size. So on this, I have two three and a halfs. So if you, like in an active 2.0, you'll put two 2.0s. Yeah. Like if you need a 4.0 nozzle, you would put two 2.0s. Two, two wow, if you so wanted to dial up a little bit of pressure, you can even be careful you don't mess up your pump. Yeah. But if you needed to dial up a little pressure, you could, um, you know, put a, like I could put two 3.0s. Actually, yeah, I have two 3.5s on here right now, but uh, I tried it with 3.0s. There's a little too much pressure for the car. Or I could dial the pressure back a little bit, maybe go up to two 4.0s for, you know, the 8.0 equivalent. Yeah. It keeps it pretty contained, quiets it down a little bit. Yeah. It's sweet. Seriously, for all you guys up north, yeah, that would be a must. Yeah. Regardless if you're a professional or not, even at home, if you enjoy washing your car or anything, I would. That's something you want in your arsenal. Yeah, and just wow. I mean, I know this is expensive. I need to talk to Jamie from Osmatic about it because I don't know that we have any in stock. We're just kind of special ordering them. But yeah. That's freaking sweet. No. All right, let's rewash it. So, you know, we're not really too concerned about thick foam. We just want to get it on the car. Yeah. Lays yeah, so on see, super I used about good. a third. Yeah. That lays on really nice. So I yeah. always have a little bit of an issue with some like 
pre-treatment foams, I guess you could say, because mm -hmm. a lot of them don't do a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> yeah, this one does, and it but won't, this one looks it like won't it jack up your uh, your coating or your your oh, really? protection layer. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I would say the only time I really use foam, I mean, obviously I use it more or less just as like a, a, a source of lubrication. Mm -hmm. That's really it. And sometimes, I mean, yeah, if you're really dirty, you know, just naturally soap will get stuff off. How long help. do you let this sit? Five minutes. Oh, nice. But I need to hit my exhaust tip a little. Little P21S. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's just an abrasive soap. Yeah, that does work really good. I've got a cave and get that. Every time I see you use it or another person use it, I'm like, man, I need to get that. Mostly because like a lot of me, myself and my friends who uh, hang out at the shop, like we all got, you know, silly Volkswagens mm -hmm. that pop, pop, pop mm -hmm. and everything. So <laughs> you get really, really soiled exhaust tips and nothing takes the stuff off. Yeah, well, this does a, a good job for interim cleaning. Now, if I needed to do some real polishing, I'd use a you know metal polish yeah. like Car Pro's metallic cut or something, but for me, if, if I just do this and maintain it, and I'm going to coat it with uh, Dr. Beasley's, we're good to go. Yeah, yeah. looks 35 cool. seconds. Yep. Doesn't take a whole lot to make your cars look nice. Yeah, I think this is like 20 bucks, and this will last you the rest of your life. Is this your first and only one you've had? Container-wise? No, 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 no. no. Oh, okay. Well, the the only thing is sometimes they get a little moldy, so you want to make ah. sure you let it dry out before you put it back together. So I always just let it like this. And so what I'll do, you just kind of set it like that and just let it, let it dry out. Yep. Yeah. All right, so we're about ready to rinse this thing off. So this is when my hands are all soapy and wet, but I can't freaking get this thing out of here. Yeah, and if you got bigger hands, there's no way. <laughs> Freaking pliers. This is why we made a new one, because it's annoying. I can get it out when my hands are dry, but not when they're soapy and wet. Sometimes you just need tools for the tools, you know? Yeah. People don't like my bottom-up theory. No? No, they don't like that. When I'm doing pre-wash, I like to wash bottom-up. I think the idea of the bottom-up actually kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it doesn't do much, but can't hurt. Man, that pressure washer rocks, man. That rocks. That's <laughs> yeah, it's, that's that's insane. Next level. And people are like, well, why don't you do three? I'm like, well, because three <laughs> would be three would be too much. There comes a point where the positive ends up becoming a negative. Yeah, so, right. No, no way. I think two right there. I mean, even though it's already a lot, but like that's I think your max. Yes, yes. this is what I want to try. So just, you know, when you're washing your garage, if you're heading this way, don't shoot straight, come, yeah, yeah. you know, down. Gotcha. The foam that comes out of this pressure washer setup is pretty nuts. And I like that these stick out just enough, but as it drips dry, it doesn't drip down my cabinet. It goes to the floor if, if needed. Yeah, that would really suck if it dripped all over the cabinet. It'd make me hate it. Rust. Yeah. yeah.
Are you a mitt or pad guy? Uh, it really depends. This is where I get a little weird with detailing. So I have my own little niche OCD things. Mm -hmm. I feel like if a car is extra dirty, which I get quite a few of those, to the point where like even with the pre-rinse and everything else, it doesn't get everything off. Mm -hmm. I actually use a really plush microfiber like towel. Mm -hmm. So this is the deli pad. I got one in there for you. It's not quite as, uh, you can grab the other one if you want. And uh, this one's a little softer, but I actually like the regular Incredipad better than this. Yeah, I have an Incredipad and haven't gotten anything else just because that's how good it is. Unless it's a microfiber towel. Mitts I don't really like too much. I mean, I have mitts. I more or less just end up using those though as like a pad. All right, so you're, you're now in business, mm -hmm. right? You've got the shop. And then how are you balancing, you know, things that you want? You like tools and, uh, you know, pressure washers versus like paying, paying your bills. Uh, at first it was more or less a balancing act mm -hmm. because what's really hard about it is I went into business, obviously loving detailing, but more like I, I also love cars. Okay. So I'm, I'm really going on the idea of, Oh, if I make my car nicer and do different things, I can put that on video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but so justifying wasting money. Exactly. Okay. Justifying wasting money. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That's how my entire existence is based on that. Really? <laughs> yeah, pretty much just at, at first. And then, of course, whenever you're broke, you don't like being broke for very long. Yeah. Like it, it just really sucks. And so I got real quick. I was like, nope, this this can't do it. So then I became very very picky. Okay and started really holding on to money, only buying product when I needed to. Uh, I didn't do anything with my car mm -hmm. for a while. And then finally some money started coming in and that's when I was like, oh, okay, well, do I do stuff with my car or do I buy stuff for business? Yeah. And so then I just started buying new, like, you know, wash setup stuff, slowly yeah. building up that detailing arsenal mm -hmm. up until about a year ago when it finally was at a point where I had everything I needed. Then I started doing stuff with my car. Yeah. Bills were paid. I had the stuff I needed for my business. Now I can do stuff for my car. But it was one heck of a balancing act. At first, you know, especially on YouTube, people see like, oh, you have cool cars that come through and you know, you must be killing it. Nah, it's not always that way. So do you have any employees? Uh, I wouldn't really say necessarily employee, more or less like a, a good friend who needed a job. Yeah. And recently, within the last year, I've kind of moved to a, a buddy shop who does tent and PPF and all that. Mm -hmm. And he needed an employee. Okay. And so I had that friend come over and figure out how to tent stuff. And then that way me and Tyler can really focus on PPF. Mm -hmm. And so far that's worked out really well. But when I'm involved with like a PPF job or something, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. you know, there's like an aspect of like employee, but you know, it's, it's kind of weird, I guess you could say. I'm not really used to looking at someone as an employee or someone, mostly in my head, it's like someone who can help out. Now, whenever it comes in the future and I do get an employee, mm -hmm. that's when I'll have to break that habit. When do you think that will be? That's a good question. I'm not really entirely sure. I do know that it will be though. Yeah. It will happen. More or less, the way I've grown business this whole time was make sure I'm in the green. And then if I'm enjoying it and all my bills are paid, the success will come as like a plus. Do you, um, what do you think that first employee would do? Well, see, that's the whole reason why I haven't really focused on hiring anyone because I don't know. Yeah. I guess you could say like have them wash and prep a vehicle for me, mm -hmm. but then that loses the aspect of me washing the car for YouTube. And then I can try to incorporate them into that video process, but then it's like, that's, I'm, sounds like really selfish and I don't mean it to, it's just I want to do it. Yeah. I really enjoy it. Yeah. So I'm sure at some point it will come where I figure it out. It'll just hit me because that's how everything has been so far. I trust that it will come where I know. Man, 
That stuff smells so good. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it is. It's, it makes you think of Christmas. It's me anyway. Now let me ask you, when did you know it was the right time to hire your first employee? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I think I probably knew when I was, uh, when I was packing boxes. I had, um, my friend Josh from church was, uh, I had envisioned, like he was doing it at his house. I thought it was a good way for him to make some, make some extra money at a bunch of kids. And, um, and so I, I, I sort of abdicated it. I didn't, I didn't delegate it. And I just said, do what you do. And, you know, I think he took that to heart and started giving shirts to family and friends and looking for ways to promote. And so then we did our first inventory. I'm like, man, I need to do inventory. And I was missing like 200 shirts. Some of it was probably just, they, we didn't, he didn't count them from the printer. Uh, and then some of it was, you know, just giving stuff away. And uh, so I guess he was technically an employee, but I hadn't really, uh, it was very casual. Yeah. Uh, and so I had to let him go because I was paying him 30, the plan was to pay him 30% of the profit. Oh, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Yeah, that was not, not my wisest decision. But I didn't think that any of this was real, you know. I, mean, I just it is an offer you can't refuse. I mean. <laughs> well, I mean, it, but it wasn't, you know, I thought I would sell a couple thousand dollars worth of t-shirts. Yeah. And so, but it was of the gross profit. And so I carried all the expenses. Oh. And then, and then I realized, man, I, I, this isn't working. I lost a bunch of shirts. I'm paying this guy, you know, all the money. And so I decided to do it myself. And so then I called my parents and asked them if they would do it. And I paid them 700 bucks a month, you know, which is a decent chunk of change for where they were at. And, yeah. And um, again, I thought we were just going to sell some t-shirts and stickers. And it was shipping out, you know, a couple of orders a night. Well, I mean, those first months I sold like $20,000, $15,000 worth of t-shirts, you know, $20,000 worth of t-shirts. So it ended up being pretty significant. And then, of course, wow. we turned on the, uh, we turned on the, the quick disconnects and the guns and wands and then the, the, you know, the pressure washing packages really quickly after that. Yeah. And so then when they moved down here, I just decided to hire them full time. They were just doing it at their house. And then when we filled up their house, decided to have them move down here, that's when you know, they kind of migrated into full-time employment. And then I realized I was killing them, and so that's when we hired Ted. So Ted was my buddy from the gym, and he was, uh, he was, deliver or he was uh, a garbage man, yeah. which of course he hated. And so we had him start working part-time the days that he had off. And the uh, you know, rest is history. But I always think of when I'm hiring an employee, I think of it as I'm looking for at least three times. So three times what I spend. The other thing I think about when I think about an employee is I don't need to pay their whole salary this month. I just need to be able to cover one month of it. Yeah. And then within 12 months, can I be covering, you know, can they be covering their, their costs? Yeah, that was my next question. I was gonna say, how do you calculate in Hiring an but a good loose formula to use would be you would want you know you would want ten percent of your revenue in payroll, yeah. including your you know your salary, not your shareholder distribution or profit, but your your salary as well. I think the question I've always wanted to ask you is when it was time to jump in terms of business, mm -hmm. how'd you know it was time? Well, I got fired, so. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's a part way given, yeah. But, but you know, that, there's a point where you start, and then there's a well, point where you Well, when I got expand. in trouble, when I was in trouble, and they were uh, deciding what to do with me, is when I really put pen to paper and said, you know, I have a choice. I can do wealth management. I can do wealth management and Obsessed Garage. And maybe they'll let me do it. I need to put up a real wall between the two, which was, which was an ideal. The whole point of doing it was to get clients in wealth management. Yeah and to use, use it as my, my top of funnel marketing. And so that wasn't really an option. And it certainly wasn't an option for me to like do just wealth management. I was like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so the choice was made. And so I had actually sold my practice. I sold it, I sold it for a million bucks. And um, I just, just said, look, I'll just sell it to you for one times, which was, you know, one times, you know, 
earnings, you yeah. know, one times profit, and um, or one times production. You know, so I was doing a million in production, I was sell for a million bucks, and uh, the guy said he was in, and then they blocked it. They said no. Oh. So instead, I ended up owing them hundreds of thousands of dollars, oh, and they oh. took my practice. So, and I owed a bunch of tax, and so it was a freaking disaster. So I started off in the business world in hawk, in debt, and I, luckily I was able to pay for it all. Yeah. You know, I was able to pay for it. Man, I could not right at the eleventh hour every the, time. The stress of that. Ooh. Let me hit. That's that. crazy. Yeah, it's not all frickin' rainbows and kittens. Yeah, no, you had a big sign in front of you telling you to jump. <laughs> and a lifestyle, you know, I had yeah, a nice house, I had a lot of expenses, you know, I got a, you know, I got a bunch of car, you know, I was got accustomed to a certain lifestyle, and I thought I would maybe just give that up and start over, which luckily I never had to do. No. Dang. Or at least I haven't had to do it yet. Let's hope I never have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh man, that's, that's crazy. I didn't know that whole backstory part. Man. Yeah, so I had made a two week vlog of the day in the life of the obsessed. And I took my camera in my office and that's what got me in trouble. I didn't do anything wrong, but they weren't sure about, you know, they weren't, they weren't too enthused about, you know, well, what, what risk is this? Mm. And so, they made a decision that it, the risk wasn't worth it. Uh, the best thing could have ever happen to me. Although I would rather have a million bucks. Yeah, true. <laughs> Be nice to have. Yeah, I'm about 50% uh, of the way through the life cycle, I think, on the coating here. What's on it? Uh, CSLXO. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, uh, I don't, you know, I'm not like the whole last and forever coating, just bunch yeah, of bull no. crap. Ask me. I, no. uh, That's the one thing I'm very honest about with uh, especially customers. Like, do you have a five-year coating? Which I do, but we live in Florida. I would expect maybe three. What are you uh, using? Well, it depends. Um, right now, we're mostly a lot using uh, Expel, just because uh, Tyler is an Expel dealer. Oh, Fusion. And so whenever he's doing PPF on a car, we want to keep it. Yeah, you want to come get this yeah. Fusion? Yeah, Fusion. So they just released an eight-year coating. Yeah, which is freaking nonsense. <laughs> I wanted to try it out. Uh, yeah. I will say, they have a four-year coating, and it was eh, okay. But the eight-year coating, they did do something different. I don't think it's going to last eight years. How about all like, coatings last a year and a half? Yeah, that's usually how I look at it. By the time I get to the year, year and a half, two-year cycle, I'm yeah. like, okay, it's about time to start. I mean, look at my roof here. You know, it's time to start thinking about it. Yeah. The only and thing now, I'd say is now the key is I don't have to go hammer down on it. It's just, you know, just light polishing and remove the coating. And yeah. I think of it as maintenance. So about like every two years or so is when I do my car. All right. That's the one thing I don't like. It's just how people will say, oh, five, six, seven, eight, 20 year coating. The only coating I will say I have messed with a little bit, at least seen that I would say works longer than most is probably Modesta. You ever played with Modesta? No, but the, it's I, you know, Modesta's needless fricking extra fluff extra work. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's definitely extra. Yeah, a whole lot of extra work. That was the one thing that makes me love CSL and XO so much is because I am not someone who likes premium grade coatings, per se, because I don't want to put a wall behind something that's just like what I can buy from whatever online. And that's a real reason why I haven't gone and done any programs and stuff. Yeah. Is because if I'm on YouTube especially, I'm gonna show you what products I'm using and you're more than welcome to use it. But if I put it behind some sort of wall, like you need to go get accredited or something, yeah. to me it's like, nah, it, because like X, uh, CSL, or well no, the Crystal Serum Ultimate. I mean, 
great company, great products, but I mean, you can use CSL. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. This has, yeah, this has CSL on it. I will say that's one thing about XBEL too that I like is they have a premium grade coating, but you can still buy it as a consumer. So it does make it a little nicer. Yeah, what a beautiful color on this car. So am I, uh, what's your verdict? Am I living the, uh, am I living up to my, is the car dialed in? Am I living <laughs> up to it? It's pretty dialed in. It's funny, like, it's, I think I said at the beginning, it was like, oh, I can't wait to learn a couple of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we start and I'm like, oh, I do the same thing. Yeah, you know, you've already watched the video. <laughs> <laughs> I would say you live up to it. The, uh, like the, my car is like, this car is pretty dialed. Yeah, this like I said, you know, it's a, it's, um, it's, it's about 50% of the way through the life cycle. So, and that's part of the deal. You'll have some toweling marks. You'll have some, you know, some, uh, some water spotting, mainly when coating It's mainly water spotting. Yeah, you it's get, water spotting. You know? And so when guys start talking about, you know, claying it and all that crap, then you got to freaking polish it. Scratch yeah, it up. I can't do the claying. I mean, there's some customers that I have that will uh, not be happy if I tell them, like, you know, hey, we have to follow up with a polish. Right. But if you just watch a video or something, I feel like if you're going to go spend money for like a ceramic coating or something, like you're going to go watch a video, and if you watch a video, they're going to tell you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I don't want to mar your paint, and then you have all these little love marks in it, and then you're upset because I did a bad job. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, no, it's because you didn't polish it. Let's start there. Yeah. So, let's say three years from now, you're doing two million in revenue as a detailer. What car are you buying? Ooh. <laughs> uh, 997 Porsche Turbo S. Turbo S? Yeah. My Turbo S. Because I like life with problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have a lot of problems, but they're fun. Have you, you had a 997, didn't you? Mm -hmm. You had the giveaway car, GT3, GT3 yeah. yeah. But I mean, I feel like 997 is gonna be that last generation of Porsche that's just raw. Mm -hmm. And that's why I want a 997. Okay. And I like turbo stuff. So you're making a million dollars a year and you're buying a freaking stinky old turbo? Yep. Okay. Right. <laughs> I won't hold it against you. That's okay. I get this. Only recently have I really been diving into the idea of wanting a Porsche. I've been a big Volkswagen Audi guy pretty much my entire life. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, I really want a 997 Porsche. Mm hmm But, hmm. yeah, turbos, they sound like vacuum cleaners. <laughs> they do sound like vacuum cleaners. I can't do it. You don't like the noise? Is that what it is? No, it freaking sounds terrible. Why is that? Terrible sounding cars. No. A 997 Turbo? Yeah, it's a horrible sounding car. It sounds like a <laughs> vacuum cleaner rolling down the road. So I will never get one. Oh, I oh I'm going to remember that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, go listen to it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I know. I like the way they sound. Yeah, you don't. I'll, I'll agree with you. It's not the best sounding turbo yeah, car. You're making excuses here. It yeah. Do you like horsepower or no? I mean, I don't like crazy horsepower, but the feel of a Porsche at like six, seven hundred wheel. Yeah. That's what I like. Mm. Okay, so you like to not, you like to slide around and not have the car handle well. That's what you're saying. <laughs> gotcha. You're gonna culture me, I'm telling you. Yeah. It's, I can feel it. Yeah. So, especially when you start modifying a chassis that you know, mm -hmm. isn't really designed for, that, you know, I've just been down that road and learned those lessons that when you start doing that, when you make the car it's just unbalanced, unsettled. Now, you know, obviously an all-wheel drive car can handle a little bit more, but like this car, like if you make it a little bit more, three, 400 horsepower, you know, it's, it's gonna be nice. It's gonna yeah. be fine. It's better, it'll be better. I think there's a point where it becomes worse. No, that's true. You're absolutely right. I mean, it's yeah. like my Golf R. If I make that 600 horsepower, it's not worth it. Like, right, it's just not gonna be a good, you know, driving experience. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's not going to freaking work. 
I hope to have other cars other than the turbo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll give you that. All right, what other cars can I make fun of you on then? What's the, what other car do you want? Oh, uh, you don't want to make fun of my Golf R? <laughs> do, you, do you have the new Golf R or the old It's one? a 2015, it's a Mark 7. Yeah. Not a new, new one, I don't like right, this. But that says VR6, isn't it? No, this one's a 2.0T. Okay. It's a pretty much just like Kyle's green one, Spectrum, just yeah. a, the non-facelift version. Got it, okay. And that's, that was a car that I've learned a lot of my car knowledge on and learned like, okay, there comes a point where if you have too much power, mm -hmm. it's not worth it. Like the real beauty of that car is I have it around 430-ish wheel horsepower. Mm -hmm. And I built it to be like a dragon car. Yeah. And since we've been out there, that's all that car needs. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, see? That's a grown-up decision. <laughs> You're talking, you have this much money, what car do you want? I'm like, man, I want a Turbo S. That's just what, I want to have it. That's what I want. Yeah. Now you're right, it, it might change one day when I do get it though, and I drive it, and then I'm gonna give you a call. Yeah, they drive okay, they just don't sound very good. You know, so it kind of kills the whole, even like the GT2 RS, like, I don't want one. Like if you gave me one, I'd be like, ah, eh, it's cool. Yeah. I'll have it for a little while, and then I'd send it packing. If I'm thinking realistically, because I know for a fact, I mean, just with the price of Turbo S's, just the way I am with money, everything, there's no way I would justify me buying that. Well, so don't, would, I wouldn't get too, I mean, to, five years ago, a Turbo, you know, you'd buy one for 180 grand and, and, and new, and then they'd sell for 80,000 bucks. No one, on no one wanted them. They're, they're going back up now. Yeah, well, they're gonna go back down. Yeah, they probably will. Realistically, I would see myself more or less getting like a 997.1 mm -hmm. with like a three, like maybe, yeah, with a three six, six speed. Like just a baseline 911. Yeah, people forget that nobody freaking wanted a, a turbo. Yeah. They were like, you know, they're like M5s, you know? <laughs> you buy an M5 for 130 grand and sell it for 60. Depends on the M5. I've, I've, I have fallen in love with uh, the E60 M5s. Yeah, that one car sucks. <laughs> no, we gotta get you in it, man. This car sucks donkey balls. <laughs> it's hideous. No one wanted an E60 M5. Matt. Nobody. Matt, no, nah, man, we gotta get you in one. We I've just, been uh, in one, it sucks. Well, you haven't been in this one. So, one of my best friends, Lewis, who's kind of taught me everything I know, uh, we're, we're doing a DCT swap on it. Meaning you're putting a DCT in it? Yes, sir, from the well, 92 M3. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> you gotta drive it, man. When it's all figured out, you gotta drive it. Yeah, well, you don't want it. I'm gonna make him cry. He's gonna put all this time and money into this thing and be like, this car sucks. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's, let's talk about the other half of that story where we actually did it six months ago and it didn't work out too well, so now we're doing it again with a different transmission. Because mm -hmm. he probably doesn't know how to drive a manual, is what you're saying? Well, he, that dang e-gear system or whatever is what it came in, and he couldn't find one in manual at the time for a good price. Mm -hmm. He could do manual, but you know, yeah. make life hard for a cool build. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the E60 M5, that's my time frame. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like, whatever, mid-20 year age. Yeah. And I'm like, this car sucks. Nobody wants it. They couldn't sell them. That's why there aren't many, very many of them, because it's a terrible car. With it DCT, it makes it crazy. Like uh, whenever it was working right the first time around. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, it drove like a totally different car. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, that e-gear system's like taking two and a half breaths in between gears. Mm -hmm. But whenever you have the DCT, the mm -hmm. eight speed, mm -hmm. it makes a totally different monster, man. Man, we gotta work on your car desires here. What else, what other? What oh, I don't want it, I don't want it. <laughs> what, what other cars are you, are you talking about here? Oh, great. Man. You're probably gonna love this one too, then a B5 S4. No, yeah, that car sucks. 2.7 twin turbo? Actually, Drew just called me yesterday to buy that, B, that B7 RS4. He said, oh, the red one, yeah. He's like, the guy backed out. Oh, well, those V8s, no, I don't want that. I want the 2.7 twin turbo. That was always a dream car. My very first, like, Volkswagen was a B5 Passat 1.8T. I was, like, 17, 18. And the soccer mom's car? Pretty much. Yeah. But, you know, I learned everything with that car. We did, you know... I'm testing Ford. you out here, see if you can take it. See if you can take handling uh, me telling you like it is here. I'll take it. All your, all your V-dub guys, their heads are exploding right now saying, this guy's <laughs> a freaking moron, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, the reality of it is you are the epitome of what we want to become, and that's uh, a Porsche owner. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, then you want a GT3. The real car, not the frickin' the, the soccer dad car. I think the reason, well, a lot American, of times when it comes to cars. American meathead car. Usually when it comes to cars, whenever I desire them, it's because I, I've been within them. I'm more like a realist, I guess you could say, in that aspect. Like, I've never been in a GT3. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't know what that's like, and that's probably the main reason why I'm like, ah, oh, I, mm -hmm. I won't get one, because, well, I've never really driven it. Mm -hmm. Never rode in one, at the very least. Yeah. Well, if it wasn't all wet out, I'd well, yeah, it's, it's not, change your life here. Which was a great day. What was your dream car? Because I know at the very beginning, right, you had, let's say, what was it, a Civic, right? Because I saw you do that big Civic build, and that was mm -hmm. to... Well, it's just the car that I had. Yeah, and you wanted to make yeah. it what you wanted, let's say, back then. Yeah, I wanted one of these. You know, this car kind of sucks. <laughs> but it's, um, you know, I, I've grown to like it. But, you know, it freaking red lines at 7,000 RPM. It's boring as crap. Really? That's it? Yeah. Oh, whoa. Yeah, so it's like... Uh, I don't know, it whistles a little bit and all that, which is okay. We finally got the exhaust sounding decent. Um, but it's, the thing I like about this car is I don't care about it. <laughs> Even though this is like probably one of the best Evos that exists. I was like, going to say. <laughs> it, I don't, you know, it's not like I'm like, you know, nervous about driving it around. Like if I drove it into a wall, I wouldn't care. I just, you know, throw it away and get something else. Um, but, you know, I, I, I have grown to like it when I first had it, and it's like, eh, this is terrible. Well, whenever you do drive it into a wall, let me know so I can come pick up the total car. I'll buy it mm. from insurance. That's <laughs> 3,400 miles on it. Insurance would probably give me what on this? Maybe uh, 12 grand? 12 Gs. <laughs> Imagine. Oh my a, I mean, as it sits, I'm, what, 140K into this thing? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That 12,000 is going to help, huh? <laughs> mm, yeah. It's like throwing a, you know, a dart at an elephant. You throw it down there? Yeah, just chuck it down there. Let's see here. What do I want to My do? My favorite car in your fleet, and always has been, is the E92 M3. That's probably yeah. my number one most desired car in life. Yeah. Only yeah. reason I, I, I don't get one anytime soon is just because as life gets more progressively busy, I'm someone who loves to drive the car. I'm going to have to end up doing rod bearings and a bunch of other main Rod bearings is nonsense. Is it? 100% nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. That's what everybody tells you you need to do. How many S65s have you seen blown up? Uh, not blown up, but almost blown up. None. None. Back in the day, there was a couple of guys in the forums where they blew up their motor. Of course, when they do that, they never tell you because they're trying to get it warrantied. So they never tell you what they really did. Mm. And, um, and then everybody pulls their rod bearings out and shows pictures of them. Look at how jacked up these are. Well, I bet you if you took the crankshaft out, it would look like that too. I bet you if you took the pistons out, it would look like that too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, of any engine. So I just don't buy it. Never have, never freaking will. Now, I mean, it may be something I would do as I get, you know, 100,000 miles or something on the car. Of maybe. course, as a given, yeah. Maybe, but even then. I just, I just don't frickin' buy it. No, that's it's my... car guy lore. Oh, I gotta do the rod <laughs> bearings. <laughs> that's the way to put it. We should make a book of lores of yeah. every single chassis that has like, oh, this goes wrong. Oh, your 997 IMS bearing, you gotta do it. <sighs> well, let's be real. My golf R will go through a water pump and thermostat housing every 20,000 miles. <laughs> well, but that's real, <laughs> yeah. you know? High pressure fuel, I didn't believe it high pressure first, fuel though. pump in a N54, you know, Ugh. car, same thing. Well, I didn't believe it at first. My, uh, my 2015 has had a different design than the rest of the Mark 7s. Mm -hmm. So mine lasted 90K miles and still factory. And we swapped it out for one that was, you know, as a preventative maintenance, let's say. Mm -hmm. It's already leaking. It's like, okay. Well, it was leaking. It's like, okay. So the original one's now fine. Yeah, I want, I want to experience a 458 Speciale at some point. Yeah. Um, but I kind of have the cars that I like. You know, I, I want a 997 or a 991.1 GT3 RS. Mm -hmm. I'll get that here soon. I want a GT4 RS. Uh, GT4 is, man, I love that body style. I've been considering, you know, the 992, the Touring, I like it, but it's not like, I, don't know, I, I, I still think that the 991.2 Touring is yeah. the best version. 
Um, that's very clean. I mean, your E92 M3, the, well, the Le Mans blue was my favorite. Well, yeah. I think it was a giveaway car. Yeah. That was like my dream spec. And then bef prior to that, I mean, it was, uh, I think we went to open house two years ago, three years ago. You had the blue uh, GT4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. car. Gen that car Gen really blue. made me not be as loving for a 911, more or less like the 718. 718 body style, just, it does it for me. Yeah. Is this car in coilovers or no? No, I've got them. I've got them sitting in my cabinet. I'm gonna get them and so I'm gonna put on at some point. It needs to be low, man. A little lower. Yeah, oh yeah, a lot. Well, because this has been my get back on the road car. Yeah. I said, you know, I'll leave it on stilts for now. Well, I mean, I have, I have, I have, I have Olin's sitting in the, in my garage. You know, sitting at the Arn building. Yeah, it's gonna look really cool when I get wheels and. Yeah. Uh, when I put the wheels on and the and the coilovers on. I have the turbo as well and the fuel pump. Um, so I think I'm gonna keep it. Yeah, I think it's a good car to keep. <laughs> I think it's one thing that really gets me, especially being in business with this, is that I just genuinely love cars. Yeah. And so, I mean, that can sometimes hurt me in the sense of I go a little extra on a car, maybe get a little behind because at that point I've done more for it. Yeah. But oh, I mean, yeah, I'm always behind. I'm yeah. <laughs> behind a hundred grand on this car. <laughs> Story of my life. Yeah, usually it's always me. The only the car I'm not behind on is the uh, is the GT3 out there. This uh, my M3. I'm probably off a hundred G's on that as well. A hundred grand or so on maybe 40, 40 grand on my E36. But. If you keep them, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, my Golf R is, like, is one of my forever cars. And I think uh, I'm like 15 into that. And it's like, I mean, that's all it needs. There comes a point where it's like, it doesn't really need much. I still have the OEM wheels on it because I just like the way it looks. Yeah, nothing is forever for me. <laughs> just this morning, I was thinking about selling my GT3. <laughs> it's just a simple formula, you know, OEM plus. Yeah. Stick to that formula, it's hard to go wrong. Exactly. If you know how to polish paint, you know, you can make the paint look good. Yeah, I mean, a car in general, my cars in general always keep them pretty simple. Always trying to decide if I'm gonna do a stereo or not. Yeah, it's very, very simple to make a car look decent. The only, I, I can't get a, into the whole car show car stuff, no, but like when I see an OEM plus car like this, or yeah. you know, the BMW, for example, E92, the Interlagos Blue. You know what I should do? Let me show you the vacuum system, it's freaking sweet. Oh yeah, that did come out, didn't it? Oh, oh that's killer. Am I cool or what? Oh man. Yes. Put a little clean up. It's so quiet in here too. Wow. Yeah, because it's upstairs. Yeah. How much of your time is spent on uh, interiors? Oh uh, man, it really depends. If it's something like this, for example, 15 minutes. Yeah. You know, there's really no sense in going crazy and using a brush and product on every little nook that you have. Especially like, let's say my car, I just vacuum it out, wipe down things and call it a day. Yeah. of my cleaning. That's all you need to do. Yeah, just every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Like once a month maybe I do that and call it a day. You guys gotta get that vacuum system. It's freaking it's so good, it's so good. I think it's the darn best thing we have. Let me try, I wanna try this out. This is uh, Bradley's, Bradley's new interior detailer, Pilot. Little surface wipe right down. That's 
about all I need. I'm not eating cheeseburgers in here, you know. How JDM is the car? Is there AC? Hmm? Is there AC in the car? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not your generation JDM. No, no I know. I can't stand it. I cannot stand it. I'm, I'm, I'm an original. Another new product I wanted to try was this Clarify Phobic. So, this is a glass cleaner. But like, a, and I normally don't like this kind of stuff where it's doubling up, you know. My wolf's is getting a little long in the tooth here. It's about time for me to change it. So this has some hydrophobic properties to it. Excited for the new traceless on built hammer. Well, that one certainly went on pretty easily. That yeah, that pretty, looked like it went really well. That was a pretty nice user experience yeah. there. Yeah. I'm really excited for the built hammer products to, to hit. Because, yeah, this is my job, whatever. I do a lot of cars, but I, I love the process. Yeah. And if the products aren't great, I don't want to use it. And then whenever there's something new coming out, or like someone's getting something that no one's ever touched, it's like, oh, that's that's awesome. Did you see that? That's just that was freaking. That's sweet. really nice. What is this? Mm -hmm. Look at that. It's just freaking Clarify. right on, right off, man. That was nice. Flashed. Wow. It feels slicker already. It looks like it went on really slick. Yeah. And really clean. Well, let's see how it goes. Wow. Not bad. So. To be determined. Streak free glass cleaner. First impressions, not bad. Yeah. That's pretty nice. Wow. All right, that's a wrap. Car's clean. Yeah. Clean, looks good. Beautiful car for something you don't care about. The interior scent we have for, or the, like the spray we have for the house mm. is freaking incredible. So when I went to Fred's garage, uh, we built Fred's garage in California, yeah. and um, he, I, you know, I was in his car. I'm like, oh, man, you must have just sprayed the Griot's leather scent. He's like, no, 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 this is your scent. I'm like, what do you mean my <laughs> scent? I don't have a scent. It's like the house scent. He's like, I sprayed it in here like a month ago. Oh, wow. Like, are you kidding me? This is incredible. And so I started spraying it in my car. And it's freaking awesome. All this, I got all these scents up here, all these different freaking scents, and none of them work. That's a wrap. <laughs> That's a wrap. CC. Detailing. What's CC? Is that your name? That's right, Caleb Connor. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Nothing too crazy. People are like, car clean, car this, car that. I'm like, no, my name. <laughs> CC Detailing on YouTube. We'll put a link in the description. Go subscribe. Thanks for washing my car with me. I needed to get this thing cleaned up. Thank you for having me. We'll That's get awesome. it dirty again tomorrow. <laughs> I will get dirty the second I drive out of here. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bill Hammer should be here soon. Um, maybe Clarify Phobic will be here soon. We're gonna play with it, test it out. Lots of new products we'll be testing. Uh, make sure you're checking out the E30 series as well as coming. Oh, yeah. Thanks to Caleb for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.